Hello and welcome to Plant CEO. In today's episode, I'd like to welcome Arturo Elizondo from um, Clara Foods. Um, welcome. Hi. Uh, great, great to be here. Thanks so much for having me. So you're in uh, Texas at the moment. I am. Yes, and I'm here with uh, with Oreo, who's napping at the moment. Uh, he's a family dog. He's a, uh, about to be 13 uh, in a few weeks. Yeah, and wow. It's quite quite old then in dog years. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and I'm here uh, quarantining with the family. I think you're originally uh, from Mexico, right? Yeah, well, I was born here in Laredo, Texas, where, where, where I'm at right now. And, um, and so it's basically, it's also, you know, basically Mexico as well. Um, I'm, uh, I was born here on the border, and Laredo's a border city with, um, uh, between Texas and Mexico. And I grew up on both sides of the border. So I was born in Texas, moved to Mexico for a few years, and ultimately, you know, grew up um, as, you know, as a, as a, you know, as a good Mexican eating my two eggs for breakfast every morning and as a good Texan eating, you know, my barbecue every Sunday. So very, very um, animal protein heavy upbringing. Can you tell me the big picture of uh, what your company's trying to solve? Yeah, so it, we are absolutely, we're trying to solve that conundrum of, why is it so hard for people to eat, um, for people to, to, to eat well and eat, you know, foods that nourish our bodies, you know, um, protect the planet and ultimately leave, um, you know, and leave cruelty off the table and how, you know, for, for me, it was such a difficult transition because it was, you know, every restaurant that I went to, all the recipes that my family knew, they all revolved around having, you know, some form of animal protein, whether it was meat, milk, or eggs in on the plate as a center of the dish. And it was so hard to, to transition because, um, because it felt like I was turning away from my culture. And for me, ultimately, what inspired me to found Clara was to, to essentially uh, break that compromise of having to choose either you know foods that are sustainable and ethical but ultimately super expensive and um and and, and that oftentimes did and, and that really didn't taste good or um you know the foods that 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 that, that were the uh, the most delicious and the most accessible were often often the ones that were the worst for you and the worst for the planet and it always felt like there was this inherent compromise and i i thought that with today's technology this this should not have to be so hard and i founded this company because i fundamentally believed that technology could could um could help solve this issue of making foods that people that 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 we know and love but produce in a way that aligns with my with um with my values of of, of ultimately giving the the planet planet a fighting chance against climate change and um, and no longer having to resort to, to animal agriculture to produce the foods that we know and love. I mean, one of my motivations of uh, starting this channel was, was uh, and these series of, of talks was really yeah. to, to look at how we can combat that, especially when we're looking at animal agriculture and, and linking that to climate change, which yeah. not a lot of people always think that is affected, but it's heavily affected, heavily outweighed. Um, and I guess it's also quite interesting from your background, um, being in Texas, which is quite a high culture for, you know, barbecues on a Sunday. Yeah. Uh, and then sort of mentally, I guess, going through that and making your own personal change. So how, how did that change for you personally also come back to help you drive this project forward? Yeah, I mean, for me, it was a, it was a, it was a long process of reckoning with with my upbringing because you know again i grew up eating never thinking about where my food came from yeah i it was it was just part of 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 my life and it was so second nature that i never questioned it until i was confronted with it um when i so i grew up on in mexico and the u.s for the first 18 years of my life and then i went on to uh to dc to spend, um, you know, to, to, to intern at the U.S. Department of Agriculture in the sub-agency that regulates all these slaughterhouses in the country. 
and it's called the Food Safety Inspection Service that oversees every sort of house in the country. And I was there, um, and that was the first time that I became exposed to the food industry. Yeah. And it blew my mind. I had, I felt so ignorant that I had no idea that we slaughtered over a million animals every single hour in the U.S. alone to feed less than 5% of the world population. We're slaughtering over a million animals uh, per hour to do so. And, and ultimately, you know, without you know, improvements in, um, in, in human health, I, I, you know, now we're consuming so much, you know, so many animal products that in some ways we can tie those directly to the negative health impacts of, of, you know, of the American diet, um, that, that, that ultimately what we're eating is now killing us. Uh, and, 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 and that for me was, was, a, was a really big aha moment. But it, it didn't fully um, enable me to transition until I began understanding the, um, the broader impact of that. That it wasn't uh, just about the animals, um, but about what this meant from a global perspective. And so I spent a few years, I, I, I spent some time in Geneva studying diplomacy after Harvard. And... and while I was there, I began reading and researching the environmental impacts and how animal agriculture contributes more to green, emits more greenhouse gases than the entire transportation sector. Yeah. And all the ships, boats, uh, cars, vans in the world combined. And, and it blew my mind that we consume that over a third of the world's fresh water and a, war, a third of the world's arable land is used towards, um, towards, animal, towards animal protein production. Um, and also that over 80% of the antibiotics produ- consumed in the U.S., a very, you know, where, where we consume antibiotics for everything as, 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 as a population, 80% of those go to animals. And so it was this mind-blowing um, this 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 mind blowing experience for me because I I didn't know any of this and I was mad because I wasn't taught this at school and I had to learn this on my own yeah. and, and 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 therefore I also appreciated the fact that um, that we all have our own journey we all have a very different set of of, of, of experiences and ultimately the pro you know the, what I found the challenge to be is or the problem for me to solve is how do we meet people exactly where they're at not force people to change in any uh, to to change the way they behave but how do we make it as easy as possible to do the right thing and to choose the right kinds of foods that that are in line with our health with our values um, and and and, and, and and with the planet and that's something that uh, that was that, that really um, informed uh, why I decided to to dedicate my life on this earth uh, for this cause. You you, you said some uh, interesting data points there. I think uh, you know uh, when I've looked at sort of data points with especially with um, you know methane um, and from from cows um, and that actually staying in the upper ozone layer longer and causing more damage than any other gases. Uh, You see that's such a huge contributing factor to the way our planet is, uh, is, uh, is heating up as well at the moment. And, um, and the other point you said was, was, uh, was about antibiotics and uh, the worrying fact is that, you know, the more and more meat that is being consumed, with animals that have been given antibiotics and then would make us less, you know, resistant uh, when, when we actually start to have diseases. So in the future, you know, if we, there will be these, these times where humans won't be able to take antibiotics. And I think, you know, having your insights, um, you know, from, from working uh, with, with the government um, USDA is really interesting. And I think it's, um, it brings up a wider discussion point over what governments are doing to make changes themselves. Like, I think when I, when I think about the different countries, you know, there's definitely, you know, what I see um, governments that are more future facing in terms of actually putting down standards, like the Canadian government, for example, have, um, you know, worked with a number of scientists to come up with 
you know, a new food pyramid. And they didn't say that this is a vegan or plant-based. They just happened to remove, you know, uh, dairy and, and meat from, from that new food pyramid. And they've, they started to push that now forward. And now you're seeing a lot more investment in, in Canada happening. Um, so what, what do you say, like coming from your background in, in that government agency, how much responsibility should governments in, in you know, these countries, our countries, uh, be doing to, to, to make this change? It's such a great question. And I, you know, I grew up wanting to serve in public, to, 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 to be a public, um, to, to go into public service. And be a public servant and work and you know work in government because I thought that that's where I could have the biggest impact. Um, and I think to to your question, it's it's such a great one because of the word should. And I think the the government that there's a big distinction, especially today and especially in this country, about what governments should be doing versus what governments will and are doing. And that's there's such a big disconnect because I do think that food, I mean, it, it, it's, it, it's such a, it is, it, it's one of those things that you, that every single person has, to, I mean, it has to consume, has to interface with at some point, you know, multiple times a day. It's one of, it's, it, it's something that's so core to every human on this planet. Right. And yet I think that the government, you know, our government's, Unfortunately, are are I think we can do. We, we, I think they can be doing a lot more yeah. to at, least, at the very least level the playing field for all of these companies and, and and innovation to create and let let the free market decide. Um, but ultimately, I mean, food security is such a huge part of it. And and when it comes to fighting climate change, when it comes to you know fighting our health epidemic, um, it, it is is that it is and, and and food justice, right? And food deserts. It is such a um, it is as close to a silver bullet as you can get to solving or at least making a very big dent on some of the world's most intractable problems. Mm -hmm. and, 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 I'm, and, and I think that there's, there's a lot to be done, and I think especially on the regulatory front, as um, you know, that, 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 that the governments can, can definitely be leading uh, these changes opposed to you know, what, what has been now, which is either not doing anything about it or resisting that change. I mean, obviously, you know, the meat industry and dairy industry is heavily subsidized, obviously here in the UK, but also in, in, in the US. Yeah. Um, you know, there has been talks, you know, like to, to give, give the new uh, companies such as yourself yeah. a fighting chance to, to make a dent, you know, I mean, tax one thing on that and, you know, relating it to, you know, the, the health is right. Yeah. And, and, and look, I'm not even saying, like, this is the crazy part. I'm not even saying subsidize all of these new companies that are trying to do, you know, trying to make, like, trying to fundamentally improve the state of the world and the state of our food system. I'm not even saying to subsidize that. I'm saying just remove the subsidies from the existing industry right. to just level the playing level field. Level it, right. Be able to, to compete. You know, all, these industries already have massive scale because they've been able to grow for the last you know 50 plus years that uh since the advent of of modern like factory farming and 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 and, and it's tough you know as small companies to compete much less just, just compete on that front when scale is such a massive differentiator but it's so much harder to compete when the uh, the the rules are stacked against you yeah um, as, as a company in favor of, of the entrenched industries. Um, so I, I'm saying just, you know, allow it to be, uh, you know, allow it to be a level playing field. And I guess, you know, versus, you know, going from the government and the policy route is yeah. what you're doing, which is, you know, the other route you can take, yeah. which is, which is a, a great plan. Like think about, you know, all the big uh, players in the food industry, whether it's, you know, Kellogg's or General yeah. Mills, uh, and offer them a simple switch out for what you're you're planning with with your uh, alternative um, egg products uh, that could be used in ingredients such as cakes and stuff. It'd be great if you could just talk yeah. about 
um, side as you know, what, what, you know your company and, and the focus that you have now? Absolutely, and, and, and again, we you know this focus comes almost exclusively from my um, from my right. from my sense of impatience. Honestly, <laughs> yeah. I, I left government because I couldn't I couldn't handle it anymore. Just how long right. it takes to make a difference, and especially at the federal level, where where you know I, I not only was I at the USDA, I spent time at the White House, at the Supreme Court, and with my congressman in Texas, and the pace of change, um, especially when it comes when there's so much gridlock, which unfortunately is 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 where we're at today, um, is that it's so hard to make um, to 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 really. Um, uh, for for me, it, it felt very difficult, uh, very long to to make to make a difference of that scale within government. And then I realized that if I could take matters into my own hands, I would. And what the light, you know, the, the light bulb that uh, that went off in my head was, well, I can use a private sector to drive change. Like, why do I have to go through government to make the difference when there is so much opportunity? For me to take matters into my own hands and work with the existing infrastructure and and um, and 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 build a company that will do just that, and I'm so excited to do that. And and I, I think a big part of this stems from my sense that not only impatience as me being a very impatient individual, but that the world can't wait. Yeah. We can't be patient with climate change. We can't be patient with. Um, with our health epidemic, with our health crisis epidemic. We, we can't be patient with the billions of animals that are slaughtered every single year in this, uh, uh, in this world. And, and ultimately, I felt that I had to take matters into my own hands to, to at, least, at least try to make a difference. And and that is directly tied to why we are a B2B company. So we make proteins, real animal proteins without using a single animal. And our core focus right now is, um, is on eggs and egg replacements, uh, more broadly and egg proteins that have really unique functionalities like you know, like binding and foaming and gelling, but also really great nutrition, really amazing amino acid profiles um, and, and, and a really clean taste. And so we felt that this was a really powerful way to build a platform, but ultimately it's to build a platform of ingredients so that we can enable the next Beyond Meat, the next Impossible Foods, the next, you know, wave of companies uh, to trans to essentially create really kick-ass products that are delicious nutritious and and ultimately um and ultimately you know accessible to all yeah. and, and that's really our mission and, and and that's also why we're really well positioned to work with companies like general mills like mcdonald's right like uh 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 like kellogg's and uh, and 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 some of the largest companies in the world in large part because we are you know, they are already selling and, 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 you know, to millions of consumers all over the world. They have massive scale. And I think if we're going to make a, a, bit, a big difference in terms of how the world eats, we can, I, I acknowledge that we can't do it alone. And what better way to do that by, than by working with these, the, largest, um, the largest companies in the world to bring about that change. Uh, and, and so that it's not a... You know, it, it, it's not a conflict, but really, it's a partnership, and, yeah. and the, the world needs uh, needs more of that. And that's why that's how we're setting ourselves up as a B two B ingredients company that can develop really functional ingredients, egg replacers, as well as other um, other proteins that that companies can use to develop the next generation of food. What is your technology? How do, how do you go about making it? Is it is it to do with fermentation? Is that the the main using yeast, uh, it'd be great to understand a little yeah. bit. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a little bit, uh, uh, yeah, it's a, it, 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 it can seem crazy uh, from the outside in terms of, you know, how do you make animal protein that has a taste and nutrition of animal protein, but with the, um, you know, with uh, a much smaller carbon, water, and land footprint without using an animal in the first place. And, 
it sounds crazy, but as crazy as it sounds, the technology has been around for over 40 years. We've, we as a world have already been making animal protein without using animals for 40 years. The first ever protein was insulin. Uh, insulin for diabetics used yeah. to come from pigs. You had to kill a pig and then extract the insulin protein from their pancreas, purify it, and then inject it into people. Oh, and wow. that's every single diabetic got their insulin protein from prior to the prior to um, it being uh, synthesized yeah yeah to, to the 80s and and you needed over 50,000 pigs to make one kilo of insulin protein wow fast forward to today and over 98 percent of insulin in the world is made using fermentation and essentially you essentially use um a microorganism uh, to like yeast to uh, to use its natural machinery of making protein. So yeast can be used to make you know to make alcohol. So so yeast can convert sugar into alcohol to make beer and wine. Can convert sugar into carbon dioxide to leaven bread. Yeast can also be used to convert sugar into protein. And so there are a lot of different microorganisms that naturally convert you know carbon. Uh, you know, simple, you know, glucose into, into protein. And so that's how all fermentation, all, all insulin is made today. And, and then, um, you know, the, the, the second, the second wave of this technology was in the nineties uh, where, when cheese finally became vegetarian prior right. to the nineties, most cheese was not vegetarian. You had to kill baby cows in order to make it because the protein used to curdle the milk to make cheese used to come from the fourth stomach of baby cows. Wow. And, and that was the animal rennet, wasn't it? In, in, uh, it's, it, yeah, exactly. It's the animal rennet um, that, that is still used in like artisanal cheeses, but for the most part, almost all industrial cheese, or at least 90% of it, more or less, is made using fermentation as opposed to baby cows. So cheese is now actually vegetarian because you no longer need to kill baby cows to make that to make that, um, to make that, that, yeah. that cheese. And I guess on that topic, there's, there's companies who are trying to recreate casein, right? Which yeah. Is, it gives, gives it the cheese flavor, I, I think as well, right? Um, exactly, yeah. And so that's also a very similar approach to our technology, uh, which is, yeah, that, 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 that you can essentially, that microorganisms are just as good um, as animals at making these different kinds of proteins, if not better. Right now, insulin is kosher. It's halal. You know, it's 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 really safe. It doesn't give people the reactions that it that that it used to in the past. Now, cheese, you know, it's consistent. You can make the same you know the, the same batch, which is really important for big companies that want to ensure that consumers get the get you know know what to expect when they're when they're buying it. And so, similar with with casein. And so, we saw this um, this trend in industry that over the last forty years we've replaced the pig for insulin protein production. We've replaced the baby cow for rennet protein production. Can we replace Eclera, the chicken, for egg protein production and replace animals more broadly from the protein production complex? Yeah, awesome. And um, so the other thing is that you've, you've raised uh, you know, a huge round, uh, which congratulations on your Series B round with uh, 40 million from Ingredient, I think it was. Mm -hmm. uh, that was last year. Um, and um, uh, how have you used that investment so far in it and how far are you away from like timescales? And are you planning to raise again anytime soon to help, I would imagine, with, with the production process and lots of expensive equipment and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I, yeah it's, a, it's, a, it's a great question. And for us, a lot of the money in the past has gone purely on technology and R&D. How do we actually prove that we can make animal protein more efficiently and better than animals can make it? Like, is that even possible to do? And we wanted to prove that out. And so over the last five and a half years, We've, we've invested a lot of that money um, and resources to making that happen. And, um, and that is in large part because I don't want our products to be in the corner of a grocery store, you know, being you know, super expensive and out of reach of most, of, of, of most everyday um, mm. people. 
Like yeah. ultimately, if it's expensive in the U.S., it'll be very expensive for people in developing countries. And the last thing I want is for our products to be relegated to corner, you know, to the corners of grocery stores. Um, and so we wanted that was a really critical part of 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 the company and our focus. And now, as part of this new injection of capital, what we're doing is then now transitioning to commercialization. So we, you know, the, the, the crux of the investment was to transition Clara from an R&D shop to a full commercial enterprise and be shipping product, be manufacturing, and, and, and truly be a commercial company, uh, moving and moving product. And I'm so excited to share that we are now at the cusp of that. We are actively, um, you know, building out distribution partners, uh, building out our supply chain and, and shipping product to ultimately make that difference. And what gets me most excited is that, is that for every kilo or every pound of protein that we sell, we can measure exactly you know, how many liters of water are being saved. How many pounds of greenhouse gases are not being emitted into the atmosphere? How many acres of land are not being deforested in Brazil? And ultimately, how many, you know, how many animals are being spared uh, from conditions in factory farms because our because they're not, because our protein is able to display some of that um, some of that demand? And, and that gives me that's exactly why I founded the company. Do you think some of these uh, customers, uh, the B two B customers? will will like to take that data and actually share it with their end customers and so i've seen a lot of companies in the in the plant-based space who would say yeah you you switching out this plant-based burger has saved x amount of uh, uh animals being killed or this much water exactly what you're saying do you yeah. think they'll like but or is it more like hey it's it's just a straight ingredient swap and now we'll just update our packaging and just you know, have it certified to be to be vegan or plant based. I think some companies definitely will, and I think some companies don't. And I think ultimately, what we have to remember is that these companies are essentially are essentially responding to consumers and their preferences, right? And 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 and, and, and their asks. You know, what we you know what ultimately we forget is at least I sometimes forget is how much power we as individuals have that we can truly, truly vote with our dollars. And in some ways, you know, our, you know, that voting is more powerful. It's such a powerful force to shift to, to essentially go even past policy that we can act that we can be activists in our own rights with our, with our pocketbooks that we decide. And with food, you make a choice through at least three times a day. Yeah. Whether, and you vote three times a day and you choose um, one system over another three times a day. And, you know, and, and, that's a good way to put it. We, we, we actively make that decision. I mean, we, whether we like it or not, we are making that decision. We are backing. Um, we are, we, we are choosing to live or not live our values. Yeah. To, nourish or not nourish our bodies yeah. to heal to protect or not protect the planet and yeah. to kill or not kill like that is a choice that every single one of us makes every single day yeah. and, and 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 i think with, with so many of these companies they are responding if people want to eat more sustainable foods then um then people then 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 companies will adapt if people want to see that they will and you know petitions have been started around this the whole cage-free egg movement began because of because of advocates um, because of people who wanted to see a difference in terms of how these companies source because you know there's no federal law around mandating cage-free eggs and yet over 70 percent of the egg industry in the u.s and you know it uh is shifting towards um Torch cage free because of the big because of Kellogg's and General Mills and McDonald's. McDonald's uses over two billion eggs just in the U.S. and Canada, and they have committed to going cage free. Um, and so there are all these you know companies who are listening to people because ultimately they want to they they, they want to stick around for for the foreseeable future. They want to they want to continue adapting, and, and then in some ways they're a reflection of 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 
of what we as consumers value. And right yeah. now it's basically convenience. And so from that perspective, um, you know, that, and, 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 and it's fine. I mean, ultimately my mom shops that way, right? You know, she's been, she and my family have been buying the same brands for decades. And so my question is how to make it as easy as possible for my mom to not have to shift the way that she buys, the way that she shops the grocery stores and the, and, and the, and, and, and the products that, that she's purchasing. Um, how do we work with the big companies? You know, if she loves the, um, you know, the Sara Lee, you know, um, cakes mixture. Yeah. 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 And she, she makes that every single Christmas. Um, how can we work with Sara Lee to help, um, to help make their ingredients more sustainable. So my mom, doesn't have to be consciously saying, okay, should I buy this product or this product? Yeah. But ultimately that we can make, you know, her default option already be the healthier option or the, the, the more sustainable option. I quite, I quite like how you put it with, you know, voting with your dollars in a way. And I think, you know, in the beginning when you described that you, I think people go through different stages, don't they, of this process? Like, you know, when they get educated about what's happening, with the whole ecosystem and the environment and the cruelty aspect um, and, and thinking about like voting and obviously this year we've got the, the presidential elections. So every, every camp, every, every voting party would need a campaign. So if, if you were to sort of try and influence in a way with, with a campaign structure, you know, if it was a magic campaign, you had an access to sort of media and, you know, channels, what sort of campaign would you like to see? I, I know like different companies have different approaches yeah. um, in like, they, they want to appeal to, you know, uh, the meat eaters to try yeah. and to get them to become flexitarians to reduce one meal out, two yeah. meals out, three meals out, one day out, three, <laughs> three days out, and then eventually sort of decrease and, and just be more mindful. So, so, you know, what, what do you think would work well? I, I completely with you in terms of like your mum who's always buying a, a, a product that she's used to buying. Yeah. And um, maybe it's harder to influence that generation. And we see the younger generation, especially the generation Zs now adopting to this change faster than any other. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if, you, if you're given a, you know, this magic budget or, you know, where, where do you think it will work that will give you this, the biggest scale to, to cause, you know, to make this change and influence more people? In terms of having people choose more sustainable products? Is right. that, is exactly. So when they're, when they're looking to make that, that choice on their dinner plate, yeah. to make them realize, you know, I think it's more about what sort of, yeah. what sort of communication, like what, you know, what sort of community, like for me, a lot of documentaries kind of work for me. A lot of, you know, videos exposing stuff and you know, learning more about like, uh, you know, let's take the, ch the chicken in industry, uh, learning that a lot of the male chickens were sort of, the male baby chicks were basically, it's kind of horrible, but kind of grinded or suffocated straight yeah. away. Um, so what, what do you think? I mean, some people don't want to hear that and it's, and it's fine they don't want to hear that. They, they have different, different yeah. other ways to look at it exactly exactly and and, and I, i'm honestly like that's exactly why i wanted the company i don't want to have to guilt people into eating better like i i i just i, I hate that like I, I as much as as much as um i as much as i think everyone should be informed of where our food system come or our food what our food system looks like a i think that should be taught in schools like this is where your food comes from period um yeah two is i don't like that's exactly why i wanted this company because i don't want people to have to choose oh should i eat you know should i eat something sustainable should i eat something ethical um or should i eat you know that the product you know this, this really tasty you know burger that's a dollar right um and and and, and so it in, in many ways it, it, it again it feels like this inherent compromise and, and the reason why i find it clear is because i want to focus on what people are eating right now so they're either eating this burger um and they're eating you know the, the, the breakfast you know sandwich at mcdonald's with um with the sausage and um and the egg and the cheese is how do we and there are millions of people who buy that every single day how do we work with mcdonald's to 
you know, swap out their, their, their sausage for the, yeah. you know, for the impossible sausage, right? That, or, or the beyond meat sausage, how do we replace, you know, how do we at Clara replace the, um, their, their work with, you know, to making their egg a, you know, um, use our egg instead and for cheese, use it the perfect day cheese, right? Yeah. And, and then in some ways, and that way, when, when a consumer eats it, um, it's not about them trying to figure out, should I do the, should I make the help, the, 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 um, the, uh, the, should I buy this sustainable product or not? Should I buy this healthier product or not? Ultimately, people will make, will, people will make, more people will, will choose the right, the, the better option if they're given a choice that is more or less comparable, like the Whopper versus the Impossible Whopper, right? The, you know, the burger, the Beyond Burgers um, at all the different, all these different restaurants, as you start putting them on the menus, is that it makes it easy for people to say, oh, I'd rather get this, op, you know, a number five instead of a number four. Mm. Instead of saying, I have to go to this other, to this natural health, you know, grocery store that's like 10 miles outside of the city, uh, you know, outside of my, yeah. um, of my town, because that's the only place where I can buy these kinds of, of products. And that's what I want to ultimately transition away. And again, that, that's why we want to work with McDonald's, General Mills and Kellogg so that we can meet people exactly where they're at and make it and not have to have this campaign. I want to get rid of that altogether of, we don't, we, we, we don't, you know, eventually I think, you know, it's great that people are so excited about it, but um, I think, and, and that's what's needed in the meantime, like people actively have to choose to buy a more expensive product or a, you know, a, a more sustainable product that may not be as great, but because it aligns with their values, similar to buying a Prius versus, you know, uh, versus, you know, uh, uh, a Corvette, right? It, it is that you want to be sustainable, and, and, but it almost feels like this compromise, like, oh, it's not a great, uh, yeah, this whole stuff. Not as mean, you know, not as, you know, and, and maybe um, just is not as sexy as a Corvette, but the, you know, it's so much better for the environment. But when yeah. you're buying it, you kind of feel like, well, I'm doing something great for the planet, but yeah. you know, there is yeah. like, there's something missing as yeah. opposed example with a Tesla where you can get the electric the benefits of the electric vehicle um, but you also get the sexy the, the sexiness of like having a really kick-ass car yeah. and for us I think that there's a lot of opportunity in the food system to build a, a company that 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 is positioned that way as well yeah I don't know if you heard Tesla was, was just started to sell these uh, shorts with the word sexy uh, <laughs> on the back because it's it goes with their model numbers right <laughs> it's just like uh, getting into the apparel uh, <laughs> clothing line um so yeah i mean i think making that switch is a win right large large fast food company you know making making this switch is a huge win because the amount of uh you know cruelty that would have gone into making those uh those ingredients so that's really good. Um, you, you mentioned uh, Perfect Day um, and a uh, similar company, I, I think, to yours, uh, have raised uh, a really big uh, round. They just extended their um, Series C and now have raised 360 million. But in, yeah. in the alternative mil milk protein space, yeah. uh, do you see your, your companies sort of complementary to each other? Like you said, like if they're doing on the cheese angle or... Exactly. I mean, like the, the the thing is, these industries are massive. Like the whole like competition piece that that some uh, people raise, like are beyond meat and impossible competing. You know, right. they command less than one percent of the meat market. Yeah, totally. So there's enough room for them to both grow. Exactly. People consume. You know, in terms of like cheese, and, like I mean, dairy in general is massive. Yeah. Um, it's a billion, you know, hundred billion dollar plus market, um, and he, within that you have, you know, all the you know, milks and, and cheeses, and, and so I think, you know, they have their work cut out for them as well, and and um, and then we as well, like you know, eggs are over one trillion eggs are consumed in the world today, and that is expected to double in the next thirty years. Which is the highest country that oh. consumes the most eggs? We're, um, <laughs> So I, you know how I mentioned that I, as a good Mexican, I had my two eggs for breakfast every morning. Right, right. That's the highest egg consumption per capita in the world. Wow, I did not know that. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it, 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 it is a really um, popular, um, 
uh, protein source there. And yeah. so many of our dishes, like our breakfast revolves around eggs. And so how am I going to tell my family, don't eat the breakfast that you grew up eating every single day? Like it, 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 it seems so patronizing. Yeah. And again, it was, well, why, why have to point the finger when we can, uh, when I can found a company like Clara to basically make that, uh, make that transition. What do you think about the, the liquid egg uh, replacement companies like Just, for example? Yeah, I think it's, I mean, I think it's fantastic. And again, I, I, I think that there's, it's gonna need, we're gonna need a village. Like we're going to need, we're going to need companies developing all, all kinds of products to make this happen. Um, it's not, I, I, the, the chances of us competing, I think, I mean, that would be such a great day in the world where these companies are actively trying to compete uh, because we have fundamentally changed the, you know, the, the, um, the way that the grocery store, the grocery store shelves look right, right now. I mean, that, that's kind of where plant-based milks are right now. You have almonds, soy, coconut, et cetera. And, and they're actively, now they're competing with each other because now there's such a huge component of the grocery store uh, of that shelf. Right. And right now, you know, we have one egg replacer on there that that is an alternative you know yeah. we have you know a few different you know uh vegan cheese companies and we have you know a couple um you know plant you know now we have more plant-based meat companies um but ultimately the, the the lion's share for all of these companies is still very much uh or of these industries is still very much the animal-based product and that's again because the products you know have a certain taste and a price point and a texture that really resonate with a lot of people. And that's still what drives purchasing decisions by consumers. Do you have an opinion on um, protein from, uh, that is extracted from algae? Um, well, I think, um, I think we're gonna, I think if they can make a product that tastes good with it, I think the, the challenge with algae has been oftentimes that it, that it tastes fishy. Uh, and so that has been some of, the, um, some of the concerns, but I think companies are getting really good at formulating products with it and be able to, yeah. um, you know, again, like there are some companies that, that are using it to make, you know, uh, seafood. Uh, right. So I think that there's a way that we can get all the alternative proteins to play in this category, in, in this space, because again, the world desperately needs every and all solutions to, to be given a shot. Yeah. And, I think there will be a really great place if all of these um, take off, um, but at the very least, that that several of them are able to make um, to make a dent in in, in in how we as everyday you know uh, 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 as, as as everyday Brits and Americans and Europeans you know and you know, consumers more broadly consume. Yeah, it's, it's quite funny that your dog is called Oreo. Um, and, uh, as far as I know, it's a uh, vegan biscuit as well, so it's quite handy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and again, you know, it, it's, you know, part of it, you know, the, the health thing is really important, you know, in terms of how we make these products. Um, unfortunately, there are still, I mean, a lot of foods that are not super healthy, but ultimately yeah. give us that, uh, nostalgia, and I think that there is some room for for for, for those. And, and how do we make those options a little less guilty, if you will? Yeah, uh, I think, yeah, and, and I think Oreos are a really um, great example that yeah, they're 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 not the healthiest option, but no. and I, I'm not sure actually what other ingredients they have, but they are they are vegan, and you know, I think we all need a little bit. Um, uh, you know, if you grew up eating those, you know, maybe have, have, have a few, you know, have, yeah. have one or two here or there. Um, but ultimately, I think the, the, the shift is how do we make these products no longer have to be, you know, so heavy in sugar to be able to taste good. There are companies that are working on that. Yeah. So I think we're different, different challenges so that the Oreo of tomorrow um, looks, you know, is able to still be delicious, right? And still be nostalgic, but, yeah. um, but, 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 you know, have you know, not, you know, if it does have palm oil, how do we get rid of that, right? And, and, and put in better ingredients. If it's using sugar, how do we use, you know, other, other, other um, tech solutions to, to, make, to, 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 to make lower, um, to, 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 to have them be um, uh, less, you know, ha have them have less sugar. Yeah. Have, have you uh, tried a few of these uh, 
plant-based dog food uh, companies like you know our friend uh, Ryan at Wild Earth and uh, have you, has, um, has Oreo tried those? Uh, yeah, I, actually, it's so funny. When uh, they were developing the prototypes, they came by the office and gave uh, gave you a little bag of, of treats. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, from like the very some of the very first Wild Earth prototypes. So um, Oreo is definitely a uh, an early adopter when it comes to uh, to, to alternative protein for options. For, for, for dogs, right? And, and I think that's the, that's also such a, inter, you know, such a great example of the innovation that is still, that, that is still, um, needs to happen. Yeah. For sure. still it's fantastic. Fantastic. yeah. There are so many ways like it's not, you know, people think, Oh, there are all these companies already doing it. We don't need any more. And that's not true. Like the, the problems are so big for this world that, that ultimately I think the, you know, especially when it comes to hyper localized solutions, how do we make a solution for Brazil, right? For Argentina, for Nicaragua, how to make solutions for Botswana, for, uh, you know, for Nigeria, for different markets, because yeah. we're different and we need entrepreneurs in every corner of the world fighting for a better food system. So uh, final question, what, what's your vision for the company and what's your yeah. next plan of growth for you? Our vision is for Clara to become that by, uh, by 2028, we'll become the world's largest egg protein supplier. Um, and ultimately, to enable the transformation uh, away from a factory farming model and into one that is truly fit for the 21st century. I want people to celebrate where their food come from, comes from, as opposed to trying to not think about it. Like the fact that, you know, when I when I first became exposed and learned about the fact about, about how our food is made, I was still eating my burgers every, you know, every day, but I would actively try to not think about, well, oh, like this was a cow that, that was killed, you know, that was, that was raised in a factory farm so I could eat this. And it was this cognitive dissonance where I, I actively try to not think about it so I can eat my, 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 my burger in peace. And I don't like, I don't want that to be the case. Like the, the reason why we're even trying not to think about it is because our, because there's an inherent desire to be aligned with our values as people to live our values uh, like no one wants to be consuming plastic um, to the amount that we're consuming it now. Unfortunately, that's like the most, that's the cheapest and most widely, you know, that, that's the, the cheapest and most functional way of, of, of storing foods right now. Um, and there are people who are working on solutions that, that, you know, that, 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 that are made from waste material, which can be potentially cheaper than it and still work well. And so there's a lot of solutions out there and, and, and for me, the, the, the vision for our food system is that when we're eating, you know, that breakfast sandwich from McDonald's is that we can, we can feel proud of ourselves. So, yeah, thank you so much for coming to talk to me today. It's uh, been really insightful and uh, yeah, I wish you the best of luck uh, and really hope that you, you get to that goal by 2028, if not even sooner. Thank you so much. Yes, I, I, I think you know we 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 we've set a, a, a great target, and I think uh, I think if things are continuing to go the way that, that they're going, and people continue to um, to vote with their dollars when it comes to to the products that they want to see succeed in the market, is that we will achieve that goal much sooner. Um, and that's again, I think, incumbent on all of us and everyone watching here. Um, to uh, until that until we're at a point where our products for all of these companies compete head to head on every single you know category on on every single criteria um, that we are actively choosing to you know to to support these companies and these products and that we encourage our the people around me right like my sister like now most of my family is. Um, is vegan or vegetarian and that's in large part because there are so many more options now it's like it's easier than it ever has been in history to eat um to eat a plant-based diet and it's exciting to see again i think there's a reason why gen z is adopting that um and, and, and it's i think because you know 
they're younger and so are not as wedded to the you know to, to their ways of of consuming but also because they're growing up in a world where you can get a a, a vegan burger at burger king at carl's jr at T, you know tgi fridays at you know at all these different grocery stores as well and, and i think that that's really exciting yeah totally so yeah thank you very much and uh best of luck again and uh yeah hope to speak to you again soon Thank you. Thank you. It was an absolute pleasure to be here. And thank you for the work that you're doing in helping, uh, you know, help, helping spread uh, the word about, um, about all these different innovations, working hard to, to transform our food system. Yeah, thank you. And it's really nice to hear that feedback too. Thank you. Well, bye for now. Bye. Cheers, bye.